What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Keefe. You're watching another edition of Ghost Cold Magazine's 5-Minute Reviews. Today's episode, we talk about Ibaraki, Roshimon, the debut solo release from Trivium's Matt Heafy. Welcome back to 5-Minute Reviews. This is our quick and dirty breakdown of major releases. We're going to try to do this much more frequently now. Thanks to everybody who came here as a result of our awesome and well-received Ramstein review for their album site last week. Here is Trivium's Matt Heafy with his debut solo release. This is really huge. This has been talked about for a better part of a year where he was working on this project off and on with Isan from Emperor and Nergal of Behemoth and many other guests, as well as the entire band of Trivium backing him up on certain tracks. Mainly, Matt wrote all of these songs. It's a completely different flavor from Trivium, even though it incorporates some of the same things. Just naturally, because of Matt's guitar playing and unique singing, it's going to sound like a Trivium record in certain places. For starters, the album leans very heavily into the lore of Matt's Japanese ancestry. He is part Japanese and Japanese-American, and this album uncovers a lot of folklore, as a matter of fact. He's going to release a children's book, Ibaraki and Friends, which discusses Japanese characters and folklores to children. It's going to be an amazing graphic novel out on Z2 Comics. You can pre-order that at the link below right now. Ibaraki, the album, is this exploration of black metal, death metal, extreme metal, but also other kinds of music, too. We're not going to do a strictly track-by-track -track exploration of the album, but we're going to cover the highlights and things you should not miss. We did some prep work before the video where we practiced some of these Japanese words and these Japanese song titles, and we apologize in advance if we butcher any of them, and no offense intended to any of our Japanese and Japanese-American friends. Owing to the fact that we didn't know what to expect from this release, the opening of the album starts with almost a gypsy music sensibility and instrument instrumentation and an instrumental piece. It definitely sets the table for the unexpected. This is not your Trivium albums. This is not your brother or father's Trivium records. It's hard to believe the Trivium has been around for 20 years and that Matt is getting to finally do a solo project now. But the album begins in earnest after this and it really opens up an exploration of extreme metal and black metal and death metal with the first full track. That first track is Kagutsuchi. Hopefully I said that correctly. It's epic, it's beautiful, it's brutal. It really gives you a sense of where this album is trying to go, that anything is possible. Matt sounds incredible vocally, whether he's singing clean or his brutals. There's tremendous guitar playing. Obviously this has a much higher production value than your typical black metal album that typically issues high production and clean production, but this is a very well produced sounding record. And right off the bat, Katsuguchi tells you where this album is trying to go. It also has an incredible shreddy guitar solo. The third track, or the second full song, Ibaraki Doji, is almost a progressive power black metal song. Uh, again, I'm just throwing these genre tags out there to paint a picture for you. When you listen to it, you will inherit all these sounds and feel them envelop you. They definitely went for this kitchen sink approach. You'll hear me mention that a few times. This kitchen sink approach to genres and styles, they're not jerkily written together. They definitely flow in and out of each other from section to section. It's almost like a classical music piece with motifs, but definitely it's heavy, it's complicated, it's interesting. It's gonna be something for the shred nerds. It's gonna be something for black metal fans to be interested in. With the fourth track, Jigoyu Dayu, you definitely get a deeper sense where Matt's influences in black metal come from or extreme black and death metal in some cases, not just Behemoth, which you will get to in a few minutes, but also early Opeth is a major influence on this song and this entire album. Definitely Still Life or My Arms, Your Hearse era Opeth fans will dig some of this stuff. Another track to shout out is Tomashi no Hokai, which starts with the Mario Brothers coin ding at the very beginning of the song. Awesome and fun and fun for the listeners. But this track is really expressive. I mentioned prog, but this is a different kind of extreme brutal prog. And this track is almost like a Dimu Borgia tribute song. Again, by Matt. Really, really incredible. You definitely hear the Trivium influence both ways, both the Trivium neo-thrash and 
the extreme metal's impact on the last few Trivium albums, where they have also done more progressive thrash metal and extreme metal type genre songs. I think a fun way to describe this track would be if Dimmu Borger co-wrote a song with the Black Dahlia Murder. Another track people are going to focus on, of course, is Akumu featuring Nergal of Behemoth. Matt is a huge Nergal fan. The song sounds like a Behemoth song with Matt on vocals and Nergal also. This is the most old school black and death metal song style on the whole record. The majority of the song has this genre going for it, and you hear Matt and Nergal work together, and it sounds fantastic. I would like almost want to hear a whole album of Matt and Nergal together, or Trivium guesting on a Behemoth track in the future. Another track everyone is talking about is Ronin, one of the early singles of the album, which of course features Gerard Way of My Chemical Romance. Nobody had this on their bucket list, Gerard Way of My Chem singing black metal vocals on a progressive extreme metal song on Matt Heafy's record. Gerard does an incredible job. This is an absolute unique flavor from him. Never heard vocals like this from him before, from his emo punk band. Another collaborator with Matt is Isan of Emperor, and he is another huge influence to Matt. Matt talked about what an honor it was to be collaborating with Isan over a few years. This next track, Susanu no Mikoto, has Isan on it personally, but his influence can be felt throughout the entire record. There are also Isan's wife Heidi from the band Harding Rock with Isan is also on this track and several others with her backing vocals, really enchanting female vocals that really give a new flavor to this, almost like the classic black metal sound, but updated, especially with this production. And of course, you get a classic Isan guitar solo on this track because there is practically no other guitar player in the world quite like Isan. As I mentioned before, the album has a kitchen sink approach, and Matt not only sings in English and Japanese, but also Norwegian to give it a real black metal flavor. I know it's going to be a lot for some fans to, to listen to and take in. You have to kind of listen to this multiple times. It took me three times to fully get into some of this. The playing is brilliant. The concept is brilliant. The storytelling and lyrics and poetry of the lyrics is all brilliant. But I think it may take some listeners a little bit of time to get it all. As he wrote, in his lengthy review on our site, our writer Abstract Soul commented, The record greatly benefits from repeat listening, which allows the opportunity to completely immerse yourself into the complex delivery of Heafy's vision. We give this album an 8 out of 10, and I would love to see Matt do another one of these every few years. I'm Ghost Cole Keefe. Thanks again for watching. Drop us a comment if you like this. Like and subscribe if you want more content from us. And tell us in the comments what albums we should be reviewing and reacting to. I'm Keefe for Ghost Cole. Peace.